Is he wearing honeybee pajamas? Like, is he... He can't be wearing the trench coat and Netflix binging. Everybody knows you can't do that. <laughs> What's that? Did somebody say deep robe? Dean's robe? robe? <laughs> somebody said Dean's robe and I heard deep throat. Um, <laughs> um, I do imagine that Cass is spending a fair amount of time playing dress up. I mean, you do... Biologically speaking, you, you, Cass is not encumbered by a lot of the things that humans are and probably would be able to do marathon Netflix viewing in a way that we can't. But I think psychologically you need to have breaks and you need to just go into other people's rooms and try on their clothes. <laughs> Sorry, my question has nothing to do with supernatural. It's what? Mostly, oh. No, that's that's so disgusting. not allowed, right? Yeah. Um, I curious is what you guys do on your downtime. Like, do you practice yoga? And if so, what is your favorite yoga posture? Um, my favorite yoga position is sixty nine. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think I misunderstood the question. Um, I, I do occasional yoga. I'm not like an, an, an ardent yoga practitioner. My brother is very deep into yoga. Um, and he took this picture that's on the internet. Have any of you seen it? It's a picture that I think I put on Twitter or something. I don't know. But it's him doing uh, Yamanyasna. Uh, I don't know the names of any yoga positions. Um, whenever I'm in a yoga class and they say, all right, it's time for Vinyasna or whatever. And I'm like, watching everybody else. I know downward dog. Um, I'm pretty good at that. I'm not bragging or anything, but um, no, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what my brother did. So this is the pose. But he did that he did that standing on one foot on my shoulder. And our uncle was there with a camera and he took a picture. But the thing is my brother went like Instantly, like there was no moment when he held the pose, and my uncle snapped a photo. And frozen in time, in perpetuity, is this: him just standing perfectly erect, totally centered and balanced, which he then subsequently used as his like internet profile pictures because he's like, look how badass this was. It was a single frame of a fall that happened to look good. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Misha. Hi. My name's Darcy. Hi, Darcy. Um, I don't mean to continue the Netflix theme questions, but... But you um, mean... I'm going to. You are going to. Yeah. So it so, does seem a little bit intentional then. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But so since Cass is binge watching on Netflix, I was going to ask what shows you would like to binge watch or you have binge watched, whether on Netflix or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, House of Cards. Okay. Uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Uh, soup, no, Vampire Diaries. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Doctor Who. I, I, really, I really like Doctor Who, but I've watched episodes kind of weirdly sporadically and not as a, as a continuous through line, so that's bad. That's confusing. Sherlock! I'm getting a lot of very judgmental. <laughs> Sherlock I have been binge-watched. I have a Um, I watched, um, it was a really, it's a good show, 
and it's got a great title. Uh, Orphan Black, thank you. That was very impressive. Somebody, one person was like, it's Orphan Black. So I watched the first few, the two, two seasons, I think, in a, in a very bingy sort of way, but then I've fallen behind on that. Um, watching TV in our house is hard because there's, I just don't have a lot of time, it feels like, and I try, I do weird things about TV, like I, I put it in my schedule, watch TV. Understandable. And then, it, like, TV time rolls around and I don't, I don't do it, and I feel like, ah, I messed up, I didn't do the, my, my have-tos. Um, I fall behind on Supernatural sometimes. No. Never, ever, please tell anyone that, that's a, that's a secret. Um, but it's, uh, it's little small children make it challenging to do anything, and then, you know, traveling and whatnot also make it difficult. Um, also, I was raised in a house that we didn't have a television, um, and we weren't uh, encouraged, i.e. allowed, to watch television. Um, so I kind of, the part of your brain that forms when you watch television didn't form for me, so I don't have a lot of attention, generally speaking, for television. I can't do more than like an hour at a time, I'm, I'm just, I'm done, so I need to, it takes me a while to watch stuff. I. <clears throat> When I was little, television was such a novelty for me, and by little I mean like up until the age of like 35. Um, <laughs> then when I went over to somebody's house and there was a TV on, I know that a lot of people have uh, an environment in which there's sort of a TV on all the time and it becomes almost white noise. But for me, I was just, it was a, I was a moth to the flame and I couldn't hear everything else shut out. And I, I remember instances where people were like, Misha, 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 hey, yo, yo. And I'm just like glued to the TV and I can't take my eyes off. When I was five, I wandered around the neighborhood and found a house that had a satellite and they had a goat and a satellite in the front yard. <laughs> and I first befriended the goat and then inquired about the satellite and ended up spending the day in these relatives. They were not relatives. I was going to say relative strangers. They were strangers. <laughs> House watching their TV. And my mother called the police because she had no idea where her child had wandered off to. And I was just stuck to the TV, I couldn't peel myself away. Um, hunger, eventually, is what brought me home. Um, so anyway, thanks for asking. Thank you so much. Hi. Hello. Uh, so my question for you is, we hear a lot of stories about the relationships between the cast on Supernatural, and we know that there's a lot of work that goes in from the crew, and they're very important to making the production happen. And so I wanted to hear if you have any stories about uh, funny stories, relationships between you and the crew. <laughs> that, aw, that makes me sad. <laughs> um, <laughs> One of the uh, one of the people in the list is going back to an earlier thread that we picked up of one of the. Uh... Oh, I'm on a video conference with somebody. Hi. <laughs> Hi. You must be sister to the person holding the phone because you it actually look. Are you twins? No, actually. No, actually. You do. Okay. Hi. It's just you and me. There's nobody else here. Um. She doesn't, no, she's not dying, she's fine. Yeah. What? So she's, she's talking to you, okay. Um, so, um, so, what were we talking about? Um, so I, I said, uh, I, I said to, um, well, Kelly in the costume department, I was like, it was Halloween Eve, and I said, would you be able to help with this costume? And she's like, Moira, come over here. And she said, I'm too busy. And so Moira came over and I explained it. And then later Moira said, or that Kelly told me that she had already taken on the mantle of working on Jared's family costumes. <laughs> and Moira had come up to her and said, you are just too nice to these people. I, wouldn't, I would not do all of this stuff pro bono on the side. And then she had to do my costume. <laughs> 
I didn't know the backstory on that. So anyway, I just wanted to, that's sort of a, a, a gentle way of explaining that um, we try to exploit the crew as much as possible. Um, we, we have a, it's a great set. There's a, there's, for, I don't know what it is, it's kind of just lightning in a bottle, but this crew has gelled in a way, and the cast has gelled in a way that I think is probably pretty close to unparalleled. Um, I mean, the show is going into, you know, it's in its 11th season, and we have a huge, when we took that, we took a photo of all the people that had been there, episode one, um, at, I think that was at the end of season 10, and it was amazing how many people had been there since season one, and there's no, um, there's no explanation for that other than the fact that everyone gets along so well because it's a brutal job. Um, I don't know how the crew does it. I mean, they're logging incredibly long hours. Uh, they have, you know, often eight, seven, six hours at home between. Dating. What? Good for them that they have power to them. That's true. All right. She has a point. I'm not sure what it is, but it is a point. Um, so, so they they work. I mean, they work like 80 hours a week, and they'll do it week after week after week, year after year after year, and, and they don't get to see their families as much as they would like. But we have a great environment where people laugh a lot and make fun of each other a lot and find creative ways to insult one another and it just makes it a fun place to go to work so i didn't give you a very good specific story but it's a, a general overview of the experience there yeah. thank you hi misha we don't really have hecklers that often i kind of like it yes hi i'm ashley uh, my question is if uh what what is castiel's favorite holiday and why what is Castiel's favorite holiday? Veterans Day. V Veterans Day. <laughs> Cass is pretty bonkers for Columbus Day. I don't know what it is. He just loves getting dressed up and celebrating the decimation of the Indian population. Um, February 29th. Why do we still have Columbus Day? What's that? That's true, although he did a pretty good job of knocking out a lot of natives. Um, uh, I don't know, that's a good question. Do you have thoughts on this subject? <laughs> There's some good answers there. National Pizza Day, Dean's birthday, those are good. What? Perfect. National Pizza Day, we've uh, arrived at consensus here. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Okay, so my questions kind of involved, excuse me, looking at my phone, because I thought I would get nervous and need it. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. you have a, a pardon on this. Okay, so this might be kind of a tired subject, um, but obviously there is kind of a lack of women in significant and lasting roles in Supernatural. We had Ellen and Joe and Charlie, Jody, who's still not dead, but doesn't come up that much, and Rowena, but she's, everyone's trying to kill her. Um, and it's, it's kind of odd to me because obviously the fan base is a lot, a large percentage of them are female. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know where you're getting your statistics here. And you guys all seem like very compassionate people committed to equality with Gishwas, Random Acts, always keep fighting and whatnot. But there's still this disparity um, in gender, and do you think that exploring male relationships in with them being vulnerable and complex is as important, like it's a rare thing on TV, um, do you think that that's something that justifies the lack of women, or do you think it can be done with women, and do you personally want more women in Supernatural? <laughs> Um, <laughs> let me, let me, be, uh, first of all, I just want to be forthright about this. I don't like women as a, as a rule. So, and that I, I don't, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> it's just that we don't like women. That's it. Um, 
<laughs> Sorry if there was some confusion around that earlier. Um, no, I, 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 um, I think that the show has grown. I, 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 we get, you know, we get questions like this fairly often, and I think that the show has um, evolved quite organically. There was a time, and I, and I really do think the show is largely about the complex relationships between men. It's about a certain sort of bond. I mean, the fact that the two anchoring characters on the show are brothers, and it's about brotherhood, and I think that that expands to, you know, a, a sort of circle of, of masculine characters um, on the show. Um, it's a show kind of about brotherhood, and I, and I think that that evolved organically. There was not a time when anyone was like, well, let's get rid of the women. Um, <laughs> Because those guys are so much hotter. Let's just get those women off the screen so we can look at Dean and Sam more. Um, but I, I think that uh, there, you know, season three is a good example. Like the network said, "Hey guys, why is this so gender unbalanced? Let's put female characters in the show." And. It just didn't. It, it it wasn't the right fit. It wasn't what that's what this story is about, and it just didn't fit. And I think that the characters that stick around on the show are the characters that fit into the the overall story arc of the show. The writers on Supernatural are, as a group, very progressive, very you know, equality-minded people who I, I I don't think have a bent against. Women, so I don't think there's an agenda there. I think it's also interesting to note that the audience here is 98.35% female. So there's something, there is something in this uh, organic evolution of the show that appeals to, you know, the female audience. Like there's something about watching this brotherhood of men that actually works for this audience. So I think it's, I think it's a, uh, I think it's okay. Um, I think that there are, there's of course room for, you know, great female characters. But it's interesting also to note that like the female characters that have had lasting power on the show, and I think that that's kind of uh, there's a kind of interplay between the audience and the story. You know, if an if the audience really responds to a character and really embraces a character and loves that character, it I think helps foster longevity for the character. And I think that that might operate unconsciously for the writers, but they see, wow, everybody really loves this Rowena character or this Jody character. Um, and I, Charlie. But interesting to note also that like Charlie, you know, I mean, she wasn't like a love interest to the boys. She was, you know, in a, in a way she was a female, but she was also a part of the brotherhood in a way. Uh, and the same goes for Jody. you know, it's, they're characters that fold into, I think, that bigger gender theme, weirdly. I've thought about this a lot, and, and, cause I've had the, I, I had that question too. I was like, why aren't there more women on the show? What's wrong with this show? And I feel like I've come to that answer about it, so. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are Sorry. you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, okay. Uh, my question is, what's uh, the best prank Jared or Jensen uh, have played on you? Well, that's sort of an oxymoronic question because uh, there are no good pranks that they've played on me. <laughs> they're all bad pranks um, that sort of reveal that they're men of low character. <laughs> There's, no, not with great senses of humor. It's just men of low character. Um, so when I, this is, this is a theme that actually is repeated on the show for me. So, so uh, when I got, when I was directing, I was terrified because I knew, I knew that they were planning stuff and apparently they had had a strategy session. <laughs> so they had huddled together, they had taken notes from the crew, they had assembled a, an agenda for things that they were going to do to me while I was directing, which included, you know, like trashing my apartment and various different things. 
Uh, and I had a couple of moles on the crew. People would be like, Misha, come here for a second, come here for a second. Don't tell anyone I told you this, but don't leave your keys anywhere. Don't keep your keys on you. Um, and I told the front desk in the, in the apartment building that I was in in Vancouver not to let anyone under any circumstances into my apartment while I was directing. Um, I made sure that my car was locked and parked far away from set. I took all kinds of precautions. I made a duplicate of my directing script, so that your, your script as a director has lots of notes, and I knew that that would be a, an early and easy target. So I had it photocopied, and I had it photocopied twice. Um, it, my script was, in fact, destroyed. Um, but, so this is a, a theme that, that re recurs, which is that Jared will do something. So, um, they were, Jared was messing up his lines, and the way that the uh, set was set up, like this, it was an, a man of letters scene, and if this is the set right here, the monitors are back behind the curtains. And so I'm sitting at the monitors watching, listening on headphones, and we were doing a take after take, and Jared kept messing up his lines, which is unusual. He's very good at not messing up his lines. Um, and I was like, all right, all right, all right, cut, 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 cut. And I just, I wanted to just sort of take a minute here and let him you know, organize his thoughts, because for some reason he was messing up. So I walked, I walked through the door, and I, as I came through the door, he was standing, like, the, he was standing right here, and he had a pie in his hand, <laughs> and he went, boom, and just nailed me. But I saw, I had just a flash in my eyes of the body language as the projectile approached me, and it was full on hip, shoulder, it wasn't like that, it was like, <laughs> You know, like in a martial art, when they tell you to try to hit through the object, right? He was going to fucking destroy me with fire. So, luckily he hit straight on in such a way that it like distributed the impact in such a way that I didn't get a broken nose from the event. But it just like blasted past my face and in my hair and everything. And uh, everyone laughed, and it was, you know, captured on film, of course, because every, the reason he was messing up was to stall everything so that the camera crew, crew could get ready to film the whole thing for me. They're so great. And, um, <laughs> and, and then I got cleaned up, I got changed, and Jensen was like, hey, man, I'm sorry that he, like, he really did Are you okay? Can I, you know? And Jensen often does this. Like, he often is like the one, hey, I'm sorry that this is, you know, I don't know what's going on. And then I was like, thanks, man. Yeah, whatever. It's all in good fun. And then uh, I grabbed my script, walked outside, and Jensen said, hey, Misha. And I turned around. <laughs> another pie in my face, which is um, a comment. I've heard of that more than once, where Jensen is, Jensen's like, come here. I'll take care of you. Don't, I don't know what is. And then he goes and does the same thing, or worse. Um, yeah. Damn sneaky bastards. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My name's Abby, Hi. and my question for you is, do you like to ice skate, or uh, ski, or snowboard? And if so, how good do you think you are? Well, I would say excellent. Um, and I used to be a skier, but then I, I switched over to snowboarding. Um, I'm a, I would say, on a scale of one to ten, as a snowboarder, I'm shitty. Um, my ice skating is a little bit better. Um, I trained in college. My wife and I trained with an uh, a, a Olympic silver medalist in ice dancing, believe it or not. So I, uh, I can skate backwards on figure skates. That is true. Uh, I'm a reasonably good ice skater. I am uh, a, a reasonably bad snowboarder, but I enjoy both. How about you? I play hockey. You do? How long have you been playing hockey? Uh, about a year and a half. How's that going? It's really fun. Um, is it a mixed sex team or is it a women's uh, team? I'm on a co-ed team. Um, are there a lot of women so uh, hockey teams now? Uh, yeah. That's awesome. There weren't, when I was a kid, there were not a lot, but that's great. And actually one of my teammates is here right now. 
Where is your teammate? Hi, teammate. <laughs> um, I, I've never, I, I, I played um, s street hockey once, so I know what it's like. <laughs> Um, street hockey is, you just have a hockey stick and there's a ball and a, some sort of a makeshift goal and you want, and I, I was, uh, I was not the most coordinated 11 year old and I, uh, I ran like this into a wall with the end of the stick in my solar plexus and passed out. That was the only time I've ever played. So. Thank you. I feel like I'm revealing a little too much today about myself. Hi. Yeah, I'm Misha. Um, since you've had your hand at directing, will you be directing any more future episodes? I hope so. I think I, I'm slated, currently slated to direct a couple of episodes in season 16. <laughs> I would, I would like to direct more. Um, I'm not going to direct in this season, and the future seasons, if there are any, are TBD. So, we'll see. But I will lobby for that. Okay. Thank you. And it would be great if you could write a letter or something. Yeah. Not a big deal. We can start a petition. Great, great. Um, I, uh, and I, I, I have, <coughs> I'm slowly formulating some plans to, to try to direct a, an independent feature in the next year and a half or so. so. Would love to do that. It's, um, it exercises definitely exercises a different part of the brain, and it's really gratifying. It's a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I've always known that I like to boss people around, but uh, I just didn't know how much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Misha. Uh, my name is Danelle. Hello. Yes, hello. Um, so you've inspired so many of us with your philanthropy work, and I know that we've really gotten behind random acts. Can you tell us of anything that's coming up with them that's exciting that you want us to get involved with? That with with random with? acts? Yeah. Well, um, myself and uh, a bunch of volunteers and Osric Chow um, are all going to Nicaragua in a couple of weeks. So that is exciting and very um, present for us. <laughs> I met a young woman here who is going to be on that trip. Hi, Stephanie. You were not the young woman I was talking about, but I didn't know you were here, so there you go. Who was the other young woman that I... Hi, Taylor. Good to see you again. Um, so we're going to Nicaragua. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be off the hook. It's going to be more badass than the green room was earlier. Um, and... Uh, yeah, my last time, my last trip down to San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua, was um, was memorable. Um, so I'm excited to go back. Um, I, I I'm not going to tell the whole story, but um, I was there over 10 years ago, and uh, I was sort of chaperoning a high school delegation. Uh, two of the kids were medevaced. Uh, I had bacterial dysentery. I was stung by a scorpion. Uh, it was awesome. Oh, and the work that we were doing was demolition work in an attic crawl space. And it was 100 degrees and 90% humidity. And the, and the space was so tight, and so dark and so tight, and that uh, we had to cut off the handle of the sledgehammer because you couldn't swing a full sledgehammer. So I was sledgehammering in what felt like a sauna. Um, it was awesome. So we're gonna try to do more of that kind of stuff. You guys are gonna be psyched that you signed up. It's gonna be awesome. Um, yeah. Um, and then uh, I have an exciting um, partnership possibly coming up with Random Acts that hopefully will be announced in December that could be really awesome. Um, so, yes, but I can't tell you what that is, because it's, you know, because I don't really remember what it is, but, no, because it's a secret. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Misha. Misha Hi. Murray. I'm going to risk assassination here by asking, as we know that most likely Supernatural will be over at some point. I, I told what the you. fuck are you talking about? Shame on you. I hope I know these shows. Next thing you're going to tell me, there's no Easter Bunny. Well, yeah. 
No, so there are some of us that are actually seriously really worried about you and your adorable little kids and what you're going to do because how we're going to get by because we have no <laughs> useful skill sets. In the you know about typecasting. They never talk that about that, like thing. job retraining for out of work sci-fi actors. What happens to them? Type They're completely one. useless for the, any other. There's no other application. <laughs> Like, uh, well, what are you going to put on your resume? Uh, I can stand awkwardly close to people. <laughs> Nobody wants that, you know? We're past our prime. Uh, that's a really, that's a good point. Um, that is a good point. So you're thinking I should do some continuing ed stuff right now. Start thinking ahead, like, how, like, get my typing speed up, for starters. We'd like to see you act in other things. Stripper? <laughs> That's what, that's what all middle-aged actors should do. When, <laughs> once they're used up on, on teenage-oriented uh, television networks, okay, direct. go into stripping. Direct. It, would be, it would have to be sort of like dark, obviously, a dark, very dark venue. <laughs> um, and you would have to make sure that nobody brought in night vision goggles. <laughs> but otherwise, I think it'd be a big hit. <laughs> It would be basically geared toward the blind, basically. <laughs> but there would be a strict no-touching policy. Are you saying you don't know? <laughs> it would be hard, though, for there to be real accountability there, because how would people even know you were naked, for sure? They're not allowed to touch you, and they can't see you. They just have to take your word for it. Look, if you if you have you know if you have enough integrity and people trust you, they'll know that you're naked. I actually think this could work. We should brainstorm more often. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name's Haley. Hi, Haley. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, my question is: Now that we know Sebastian's drag queen name, what do you think Cass's would be? Um, probably something along the lines of angel or feather. Um, what is, what is, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. I feel out of the loop now. What's his drag, drag queen? What? Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is his? That feels like it should be mine. He stole it from you. I feel like I should be able to usurp that from him and have that be mine. Um, how was how was Sebastian's panel today? Was it good? Pretty, was it pretty family friendly? Yeah. Um, uh, did you did were you, did you bear the brunt of some of his oh, no, salacious Haley. advances? What? Another Haley. Oh, another Haley. Okay. Ah, lucky girl. Um, she was seven? <laughs> now, just to be clear, Haley, I meant lucky just because you were draw one of the lottery numbers. Obviously, that's what I meant. Hi, Haley. <laughs> This would be a great time for one of those men in black apparatus. Hey guys, just... <laughs> you good? You good? Okay. <sighs> Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? I'm great, thanks for asking. Um, I was just wondering, uh, with the holidays coming up, I was wondering yes. if there would be more episodes of my second favorite TV show, Cooking Fast and Fresh with Wes and Mason. I sincerely hope so. Um, I do like doing those with him, and he's been getting into some pretty, pretty marginal cooking practices lately that would be very film-worthy. So, 
Halloween this year was uh, very scientific. Everything was unwrapped, and and there was a decision that had to be made, was, uh, which was, does this fit into the chocolate category or the not chocolate category? <laughs> and basically, if it had any traces of chocolate in it, it's in the chocolate category. If it's brown, it's also chocolate. <laughs> Everything else went into the other category. Um, we ha and we made it, it was a big thing. Like at the outset, walking back from trick or treating, it was like, how are we going to get the popsicle sticks off the popsicles, or uh, the lollipops, the lollipop sticks off? Because last year we blended them all up and made a like a smoothie and just ate the paper. And <laughs> And that, uh, he didn't want to repeat. He felt like that had been a mistake. So, so we, we devised a system where we smashed stuff, still in the wrapper, and then peeled it open. And then we put stuff in the blender in two separate batches, and then we cooked it on the stove, and then we froze it. And that's, uh, it's a great system because it's so hard to chip any of it away that it really draws up. No, they can't get a sugar high because they, they use all of the implements that they're allowed to use. Although this did inspire him to try to get into like the big like kitchen knives. I, I caught him on the counter like pulling out this big knife because um, he wanted to get into the candy. Um, anyway, so yeah, we're going to... We're gonna try to do another one. I'm trying not to, you know, I'm trying to make, like, I started shooting an episode and he was like, Dad, I don't wanna, I don't wanna video this, so then we had to stop. Um, because uh, I hadn't gotten him to sign something in advance. <laughs> so now, now I, you know, fool, fool me once. Uh, I'm gonna get him to sign something, so he has to do it. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I think that you might be, like, close to the last question. We have two more. The penultimate question is what you're called. Okay. Um, okay. I was just wondering, how do, you, um, how do you act like normal? Like, what do you, like, you're just... Wait, wait, what did you say? I don't know. How do you not be, like, awkward? Like, what do you, to get past, you wait, know... Wait, how do I, what, 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 what? People. Wait, wait, you're asking this uh, question about normalcy. That much I picked up. Okay, yeah. how do you get past stage fright? Stage fright? Yeah. Oh! There's only one way for her to find out. Yeah, you uh -huh. want to come on up here and join us? Let's get on stage. Well, you're never going to know. Come here. Thank you, Norton. You think it's nervous, right? You get there, wait till you're up here. Get on the chair, the chair. The chair it's of truth. That ultimate question. It's that ultimate question. It's that ultimate question. It's that ultimate question. Okay, say something funny. <laughs> Hey guys, I, actually, Nisha, I don't mean to interrupt. We, I, I need to talk to you guys backstage. Kill 10 minutes, okay? We'll be right back. <laughs> Quit cuddling her, Rob. She's got to grow up sometime. You know, there's always one jerk in the group who's too nice. <laughs> Too nice to leave the poor girl up on stage all by herself. Anybody? Anybody looking for an excuse to hug a girl? Sure. I can't Mark believe me all you, want. you sicken me. I can't believe you put somebody's feelings over a good joke. Yeah. <laughs> right. You've changed. I'm um, right. Dipper, I'm sorry. It was the XM radio thing really got to my head. <laughs> it's rock and roll lifestyle. Thank you. Oh, look, see? She oh. said that you're pretty. So that's what happens. Anyone else? Any other? Any other compliments for this young lady? There's a heart for you. You got a heart? See? They love you. You're killing it up here. Well done. Well done. I usually get booed off the stage. No. You can leave now. Um, thank you. Thank you. Well done. You did great. We're good good job. Job. It's really that, it's that easy. You just get up here. I mean, the only other thing that we do before coming on stage is take a cocktail of prescription medication. 
Other than that, I'm sure she did that too. Doesn't everybody do that? Yeah. Um, I was told to bring this out to you. You, you were supposed to do something with this shirt. I don't know what you're supposed to do with it, but but you. Oh, okay. A little a little changing music, if you would please. We do have one more question, by the way. That was uh, well, the that'll, that'll, that'll have to wait. I'll answer it as Misha. Now, a little changing music, Norton. Misha changing clothes. Significance of this is? It's but amazing. No, it was actually, a, a, I had been quest dared to wear it, and the question was, will it uh, automatically make my nipples hard? And it did. And uh, that, by the way, that's through two shirts. That's what like you show your nipples are showing. Yeah, I think they actually shirts. cut through the undershirt. <laughs> um, like lasers. I've never um, <laughs> worn a shirt before. <laughs> never worn a shirt before. <laughs> No, this is actually the first time I've had William Shatner on top of me, and it's kind of nice. Uh, I mean, I know it's old hat for you. <laughs> That's why I'm like, nah, nah, <laughs> whatever. If I had a nickel, you know what I'm saying? Honestly, I've never, I've never felt something being tweeted out as I'm a part of it. You know what I mean, you, you can, can actually feel, feel the it. bandwidth. Yeah, you kind of have to lean backwards so you don't get sucked into the tweet yeah. yourself. <laughs> 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 Interesting to what? What is the threshold? How many people have to tweet something at the same time in order for it to manifest into three-dimensional reality? So like a physical being gets sucked into the tweet yeah. and transported to another place. Like yeah, we're all in Shatner's house. It's like a, a Twitter wormhole. That could happen. I so would yeah. get in. I so would just get. I, you guys would be in the house and I'd be. Ah, oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you were all good. We're good. We're good. They're gonna drive me. We lost one. <laughs> Alright, it's now Gil Swain. <laughs> Gil Swain. <laughs> we have this young lady has one more question for you. Oh, Hello, young she lady. She won the lottery. Hi. Oh, they turned off your mic. Oh. Go down there, Robbie. Here we go. Robbie, hug her like you like to do to people you don't know. That's his move. My question is, will there ever be a Supernatural video game? Supernatural video game. They show, they show. When are you releasing that video game you've been talking about? I'm um, sorry, I, I, uh, I've fallen behind in programming, um, but it is coming along. Um, would you guys, if there was a Supernatural video game, would any of you play it? Well, I would have thought people would have liked that idea, I guess yeah. not. Well, I guess not then. Yeah. Good, uh, good question, though. Bye. Bye. You know what, everybody? That's it for this man. He's out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Misha Collins! Saturday and Friday people mixed together in one big happy family on stage. We're going to let this band right now, who is going to anchor the event of the weekend tonight, the Saturday night special. They're headlining tonight. It's a hell of a show. You heard Mark Shepard. Be there or be wrong. Playing a song from, I don't know what album. What are you playing? What are you going to play? It's off the uh, Eskimo CD. Off the Eskimo CD, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys tonight and signing you off for this day. L.A. Indie Sensation, Loud and Swain. Okay, so this is a song that uh, was a special request that we were not going to play tonight, and someone came a long way to hear this song, which we feel like it wouldn't be fair if we didn't play it for them, so this is what we're doing. Feel free to, you know, do your thing, and we'll play this song. <laughs> this is called Wave.